from seed to harvest. It's easy to grow a beautiful life. Here's Carrie Petty, Master Gardener, to show you how on the All Indiana Podcast Network. Welcome, beautiful people, to my August podcast. This is the month where we're harvesting, weeding, planting, and beginning to save and store up. Thank you for the All Indiana Podcast Network, and thank you for listening. This is Carrie Petty, Master Gardener, and this is Growing a Beautiful Life. Temp check. What kind of summer are we having this year? A family road trip summer? A beach bum summer? Or a wake me up when the sun sets summer? With Instacart, choose your own adventure and skip the shopping side quests. Where available, you can get ice cream delivered to your hotel, sunscreen to the pool, or cold brew to your bed. Well, door, in as fast as 30 minutes. Wherever you find yourself this summer, you can get the goods. Download Instacart for free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum $10 per order. Excludes restaurants. Additional terms and fees apply. They say opposites attract. That's why the Sleep Number Smart Bed is the best bed for couples. You can each choose what's right for you, whenever you like. You like a bed that feels firm, but they want soft? Sleep Number does that. You want to sleep cooler, while they like to feel warm. Sleep Number does that too. Sleep Number Smart Beds also learn how you sleep and provide you with personalized insights to help you sleep even better. You have to feel it to believe it. Find the bed that's for both of you, only at a Sleep Number store. Nine out of ten couples say they sleep better on a Sleep Number smart bed. Time to catch some Z's. J.D. Power ranks Sleep Number number one in customer satisfaction with mattresses purchased in-store. And now, during Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year, save 50% on the Sleep Number limited edition smart bed, plus special financing for a limited time. For J.D. Power 2023 award information, visit jdpower.com awards. Only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. See store for details. Hey, everybody. Happy August 2024. I have to tell you, this is my favorite month. Our farmer's markets are full of produce and our gardens are just teeming with beautiful eggplant and peppers and jalapenos and um, herbs that we can harvest and start storing and driving, drying and saving for our fall and winter stews. August is just the prolific um, kind of reap what you sow month. And one of my favorite things that the Farmer's Almanac talks about for the month of August is in the farmer's calendar is about how um, everything is so prolific. I will read, it says from the farmer's calendar, the perfusion of zucchini, eggplants, and green peppers, basil leaves, tomatoes, and onions. Doesn't that all sound so good? And other vegetables that ripen now render waste a common affliction. Beautifully written, isn't it? You can't eat all of these at one time, so stew them into a ratatouille, then freeze in several portions. Size matters with zucchini. It's in verse two quality, but don't compost the giant zucchini, hollow them out and stuff them with cooked ground beef, tomatoes and onions. Top it with mozzarella cheese and bake. I am doing that tomorrow night after I go to the farmer's market. Surplus beans can be blanched in boiling water for three minutes, plunged into ice water to arrest ripening enzymes and then frozen. I love that arrest ripening enzymes. So it stops the ripening process. Very interesting. I'm going to have to study more about that. Thawed and steamed, they'll taste almost fresh. Saute surplus tomatoes with basil, garlic, and onions and freeze or store in ball jars. One of my favorite things in the world is the classic ball jar. In the garden, garden, onions start in January, have now drooped to brown stalks, which means that The bulbs, which an onion is, an allium bulb, the bulbs are ready to harvest. You know, have you ever seen in the fabulous antique stores and some of the garden centers, the the onion braids? I love the old art of um, when the onion bulb is ready to pull and the brown stalk is um, fully ripened and kind of drooping over. You pull them out of the ground, but you keep that stalk on and you let them dry a bit and then you braid them into a long hanging braid and they look beautiful hanging on a pot rack. Same with um, peppers. You can keep the stems on peppers and braid them and hang big bunches. You want to lay them out individually first so that they can dry just a tiny bit before you braid them, but they can dry in the braid as well. 
But it's so it, therefore it says leave them in the sun for two days before storing them somewhere dark and cool for two weeks. And always remember to put your tools away. So important. And my favorite Robert Frost reads a painful lesson that he learned only too well. He says at the end of the row, I stepped on the toe of an unemployed hoe. It rose in a fence and struck me a blow in the seat of my sense. I don't know how many times I've done that. Stepped on a rake, stepped on a hoe, stepped on a plow tool. Um, I love my Fiskars tools. Fiskars is a great partner of mine. They send me tools and new tools that they get. Um, and I, I use them in my own garden, but I also talk about them on um, the TV show Lifestyle Live here at Wish TV. Um, you can find that on Wish TV, LifestyleLive.com but, or .tv. But Fiskars is just a great tool provider. And one thing I love about them is the handles are orange. So you're going to see them if they're laying in the dirt. I used to collect old antique, like brown wooden handled tools and I love to work with them. But by golly, I couldn't find them. They'd be in the garden and they blend right in. And I, sometimes I found tools the next season. So that's no good, right? But this is the time of year. You definitely want to be thinking about weeding, planting and saving. Why weeding? Well, weeds in the Midwest and across the U.S. are either annual or perennial. And the weeds definitely right now are setting seed. And if they set seed and you let those seeds drop, guess what? Next year, you're going to have more weeds. So you want to pull them and you want to pull them from the roots. Um, I sometimes burn them so that I can uh, prevent from using any kind of insecticide. But if you have a really good weeding tool, one of those long silver poles that have a little V hook on the front, you can plunge that deep into the soil and take a circle motion around the weed and then tip it to its side and pop those roots out. You want to get a root by a, a, a weed plant by her root, particularly the notorious thistle. Thistle is the bane of my existence right now. I don't know how I got it in the garden. She must have blown in or come in from a pollinator or a bird dropping or something. But there is thistle seed among my Russian Russian sage perennial plant that I'm really furious about. And they have a really long taproot. But thistle needs to be eradicated pretty quickly because once its leaf gets big enough, it is as tough as anything else to kill off. It's almost as tough as poison ivy, which almost the only thing I use insecticide on is poison ivy because it needs a strong brush killer. Speaking of poison ivy, this is a time when it is pretty prolific in your gardens and in your woodlands. Um, make sure you're looking for um, leaves of three you want to flee, but they have a notch in them. But the best way for me to tell people how to identify poison ivy is this. Poison ivy has, it's a vine and it grows underground and where there's one plant, you'll see other plants and you don't want to just pluck off one. You definitely don't want to touch it anyway, but the center of that plant is red and red is often a very strong indicator of something that's noxious in the garden. And same with animals, uh, red banded snake or um, sometimes red insects. Red is a real indicator of something that's poisonous sometimes. So that red center on the poison ivy is a really good indicator. So make sure you're getting rid of that this time of year because it is growing, especially in the Midwest where we've had so much rain. I, I can't get over the amount of rain this year. How about you? Um, this weekend here in Indianapolis, Indiana, where I reside, it's going to be dry. So I'll be going out and deadheading all the mushy, wet, gushy blooms that have faded and try to uh, fertilize everything because the water has rushed through my pots and through my plant root systems and washed out a lot of nutrients, right? When you get those flooding kind of rains. So it's a good time to fertilize again. I use a miracle Grow water-soluble fertilizer or a fish oil fertilizer. The other thing, if you do see rain coming, particularly for your roses, um, to prevent fungus and black spot, you can use a granular fertilizer. I like Rose Pride. And I put it around my plants before I know a big rain is coming. And then it'll um, take it down into the roots. And it's a systemic, which means it takes it up into its system. Um, just like humans, we're systemic, right? I saw an interesting um, documentary last night. I was watching, uh, and I, I found this beautiful 
little farmer. She was a small farmer, only 22 years old, which is really rare for a small farm to be owned and operated by such a young person, female particularly. But it stated that 40% of U.S. farms owned currently are owned by people 65 and older, which does make sense, right? It's a trade where people are aging out, as many trades are, uh, healthcare, our military, but farms are owned by people 40%, 60, 65 and older. It's critical that we teach our youngsters about gardening and about where their food comes from. It's, it's important to take your kids. Uh, today was the opening day of the Indiana State Fair. And it's one of the greatest state fairs ever because it's, it's in the Midwest. It's old fashioned. It's, um, incredibly clean and safe. And oh, the food is so good. But, Taking kids to the state fair is really important because there are garden exhibits there. There is animal husbandry on exhibit there. And you can teach youngsters the pleasantness of growing their own food, raising their own animals, and farming, quite frankly. We need more farmers. We have to start building communities that attract people and particularly attract young people. So um, at the state fair, there is at the uh, back of the state fair is the Purdue Agricultural Extension Exhibit Garden. And I am a master gardener and I learned from Dick Crum at the Purdue Agricultural Extension Office. And I need to retake the class this fall and re-up my volunteer hours and start logging those again to stay a master gardener, right? And so um, I'm excited to do that. I'll be talking more about that as as we go along in the seasons. But One important thing I learned as a master gardener was the cycle of life, the cycle of the garden, and when to plant, when to harvest, and how to store. So this is the time of year when you want to start saving your seed heads. You want to start saving dried flowers for fall arrangements. You want to start canning your tomatoes. You want to start freezing and putting away in um, maybe even uh, all of our olive oil ice cube trays, some of your herbs for cooking. I love storing them that way. I will dice basil and oregano and chive and fill ice cube trays. I'll probably do that this week and fill ice cube trays with the herb <clears throat> excuse me, and then put the olive oil over the top. It's a perfect way to really enjoy your harvest throughout the year. And it gets you excited for the spring when it's deep winter and the snow's coming or an ice storm and you've made um, a beautiful minestrone soup and you get one of those ice cubes out and you smell those fresh herbs cooking. It just, it brings the beauty into your life. It's, that's what I mean when I say growing a beautiful life, Right. So as you're harvesting and storing and saving your um, abundance and taking stock of your garden and giving thanks for the things that God and nature have brought your way, this is also a great time to start propagating and rooting anything that you want. To, rooting happens very quickly. Like in a week, roots will start to grow on any cutting that you might place in water. And so I've started, for instance, with coleus, which is that bright speckled leaf that enjoys semi-shade. Um, and it has a bloom that will come, but it's mostly grown for the foliage. Uh, I had some damage on a coleus plant. It, the pot fell over from a storm, so all of them broke. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to throw those out. So I stripped the leaves off the bottom and I filled a ball jar with cool water and I placed those breaks in the water and put them on my kitchen windowsill in the sun. And lo and behold, roots pop out of every little bump or node. Those are the places that the universe lives and grows, right? I always love saying that, but it's true. The node is the bump or the growing spot of any plant. And that coleus will send those roots down. And then I'm going to use those for my fall containers. I don't have to buy any more filler or foliage. I have it. So that saves me money. It's also very interesting for children to help in the garden propagate and get plants rooting in water. But make sure that you buy a good variety of um, a little white jar. You can find it in the hardware store in the insecticide area uh, of rooting hormone. 
and it should just say rooting hormone. It's a white powder um, and you dip any cutting into it and then you can place that cutting right into some sand or into some potting soil and keep it watered. And that rooting hormone will encourage growth just like a growth hormone. And it's a wonderful thing. I always keep it in my gardening bench. I keep that and um, crystal vases clean all the time above the sink in the garage. So at my gardening bench, I can propagate. But if there's something that isn't propagatable, I hope that's a word, but I like it. If there is something that's not propagatable, then I keep crystal vases around and I fill them with water and I make floral arrangements of anything broken, damaged, or if I'm just cutting some flowers back or want to bring them in the house. Nothing better than a dinner party or just a, a dinner with you and your your partner or spouse or family um, with a fresh bouquet of flowers that you've grown. That's growing a beautiful life. So tonight, Chris and I will have dinner. It should be a nice night. We'll probably sit outside and I'll light some votives and I'll put some flowers around and even use the fine china outside on the patio table. And we'll open a bottle of wine and turn some music on and light those candles and just sit there and listen to the nature and eat a beautiful meal. And I think that is what it's all about. We are here for just a blink of an eye. And you can choose how you look at every day, what kind of lens you look at life, what you do with every day, what you do with your life. But I choose to grow a beautiful life. This is Carrie Petty, Master Gardener. I'll be here every month, the first of the month. This is your August summer podcast, hopefully teaching you a few things you didn't know. Join me next time. From the All Indiana Podcast Network, this is Growing a Beautiful Life. Be sure to like and subscribe, and be sure to check out other great podcasts online now at allindianapodcastnetwork.com.